I recently performed a live set in Bitwig Studio in quadraphonic audio. This meant I was able to spatialize my audio through four speakers and be able to position things at will. This was really powerful and created a really wonderful listening experience. Despite this working really well in Bitwig Studio, there were some workarounds that it needs in order to make this happen. There are definitely advantages and Bitwig makes us really fun and really unique and probably something I wouldn't be able to do in many other DAWs. However, setting up the multi-channel audio is a little bit tricky. Setting up the MIDI controller with the script becomes a little bit weird because you have to mix what happens in the script as well as some MIDI learn. So let's take at the advantages, how we can set it up, and make sure that our MIDI controllers are controlling our mix. Let's take a look at a simple two-track setup. I have my quad panner saved as a preset. To output to four outputs in my interface, I'll drop in a one-bar counterclockwise circle preset. So let's take a look at the grid, and we can see we have the track audio in, and we split it across four hardware outputs. The mixing is controlled by an XY panner that controls four gain values. These are scaled by a sine wave for a smoother perceived transition from speaker to speaker. There is an overall gain controlled by macro, and now as I move my XY control, the sound is panned among the speakers. Before we get too excited, let's take a look at something important. You'll notice these menus select the names I provided for the hardware outs in the audio settings. These names are specific to the interface. I gave them fairly generic names because I switch between interfaces. I have a different interface for performance than I have in my studio. I configure these interfaces with the same output names, out1, out2, etc. If I didn't, these menus would get confused with the new interface, and I'd have to select the outs for every pattern in my system. Additionally, when I drop in presets, it kind of just works because it's already configured for these names of outputs. Finally, you'll want to make sure you're not sending the master audio out to your quadraphonic setup. For example, if you only have four outputs on your interface, your master outputs will be set to the same hardware outputs as two of your quad speakers. You'll need to pull down your master level, otherwise you'll hear your quadraphonic mixed with your stereo output. Let's get back to the fun stuff. Bitwig's modulation is simply awesome for animating sounds in quad. By modulating X and Y by sound waves with different phases, we can make circles. Changing phase and speeds, or modulating the modulators, we can get other patterns. Different modulation shapes produce different spatial effects. The LFO amount acts as a sort of distance from center. For example, I can create a spiral from the circle by modulating the LFO amount with another waveform. These jitter controls add noise to the pan position. You can turn the modulation down and statically pan the sound too. All this fun is for just one track. Playing with these different patterns on a single sound or clip really opens up the listening interest for any sound and affects how you make music for quadraphonic setups. What about effects sends? Remember, the grid device passes the track audio to its output, along with going out to the four speakers. The grid output can now be routed to send effects. Effects sends can of course be panned in quad two. In fact, this is where things get really interesting and open up sounds. We can have the track and the effect pan in opposite directions or out of phase. The reverb and the delay are going in opposite directions. This really opens up the original sound compared to the effects and creates unique effects that are not realistic, but are really fascinating.
Bitwig's macros are also a great tool for adding spatial control as an effect. We can change many parameters, so then we can deviate from the circle to a lot of different interesting patterns just by the turn of one knob. The mix of tracks is where things get tricky and a little bit cumbersome. It's easy enough to add panners to several tracks and give them their own unique space in the four speakers. But because we aren't using the master bus for our output, our track levels no longer seem to work. These sliders control the levels at the end of the chain, but we send it to the speakers before this, so the slider has no effect on the audio going to the speakers. It does affect the audio going to the sends though, so you need to make sure that you do have this slider up so you can get your audio to your sends. Additionally, the MIDI controller script doesn't do what it's supposed to do now, change the volume of the tracks, because it's programmed to modify the track slider. A workaround is to add a tool device and use MIDI Learn to control the gain of the audio entering the panner. This works, but of course defeats the script and you lose the visual benefit of the track sliders, so it's a bit of a compromise. You also have the problem if you reorganize your tracks, then you're going to need to remap your controller because your sliders aren't going to match visually with your tracks. So when I perform live, I tend to restrict myself to eight tracks, but I'll use instrument selectors and clip automation to be able to have several different synths in one track, for example, or different sounds and different clips on a sampler. So that's the overview of how I mix quadraphonically in Bitwig. It can really open up a set to new sonic dimensions. Quadraphonic sound is not terribly complicated to set up in a small situation uh, compared to something like Dolby Atmos. But you still get a lot of wonderful spatial effects and a lot of new listener interest. I hope you get a chance to check out Quadraphonic Audio sometime. It really opens up new ways of making music and is a really wonderful listening experience.